On today's Ask Dr. Bitcoin, we're going to have a project profile on both USI Tech and BitConnect, a double feature. And in a completely unrelated segment, we're also going to talk about how to spot a scam coin. Stay tuned. Well, hello there. I'm Mark Risen Hopkins. I'm a cryptocurrency and blockchain enthusiast who's been studying and learning about the space since 2011. And today we're going to talk about a few things that, frankly, kind of irk me. Right now we're going through kind of the renaissance period of cryptocurrency and blockchain. You can literally fall over and trip into a, a multi-million dollar idea that's legitimate and has great potential to change the world for the positive. And yet some people still persist in engaging in scam-like behavior. And so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to hopefully educate you uh, uh, in terms of how to avoid these types of things and talk about some of the ones that have come to fruition, come to their collapse this week as well. So stay tuned. So in today's project profile, we are going to talk about BitConnect and USI Tech. Now, why are we grouping these two things together? Because they're essentially the same program. Uh, and they are also, as of this recording, kind of collapsing at the same time. If you have heard of either one of these things, or if you, even if you haven't, you can go check out, uh, just do a Google search uh, to on Reddit or on Google and kind of see some of the stories that are really quite heartbreaking people that took out second loans on their house invested $500,000 into these programs, and now they're left with nothing. Unfortunately, this is not a new story. As, as, the, uh, as the, the saying goes, there's a sucker born every minute, and Ponzi schemes are not limited to the cryptocurrency world. But these two in particular are, and so that's why we're talking about it today. I didn't put my normal amount of research into these two projects. We do it for a normal project profile. We go down every aspect, talk about the different economics of the coin and the technical aspects of the coin. I'll be honest, the red flags that popped up with both of these projects at the very beginning precluded me from even doing a report on these things because I didn't want any of my clients to consider these things as viable investments. But we're talking about them today because they are in the news. Um, let's talk about some of the, uh, the, the aspects of these projects. They are straight up Ponzi schemes. Whenever you have a group of investors that are being repaid solely through the revenue stream of new investors three-dimensional triangles, uh, any type of term that you've seen this referred to as if you see a treed structure and that's the only revenue stream for the organization, that is a Ponzi. And that's exactly what these are. BitConnect and USI Tech promised insane amount of returns during a period of astronomical growth for the cryptocurrency community. So it kind of hid in the background. People felt, well, hey, if Bitcoin is going up the level that it is, maybe this new alt currency could be going up, or maybe USI Tech, this, this mining and investment company, could go up at the same amount. But they were promising returns above and beyond what Bitcoin itself was doing. They were promising insane percentage returns in relationship to Bitcoin itself, which should have been the first red flag. They all made the same kind of sparkle hands promise that they would be delivering unrealistic gains through automated trading and cryptocurrency mining. Now, certainly cryptocurrency mining to the uninitiated sounds like you're making money out of nothing. But in fact, there are very uh, difficult margins to manage uh, during most normal markets where cryptocurrency mining is happening. You've got to pay for the electricity costs. You've got to pay for the equipment costs. You've got to house those equipment pieces of equipment inside of data centers, which are not cheap to put together. You know, a good data center building could be between one and $10 million itself. And then you've got kilowatt hour charges between three and 10, per, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, and these are the most densely, uh, ele most dense electric using machines you'll find in any data center anywhere in the terms of crypto mining, cryptocurrency mining. Promising insane returns, uh, 100, 200, 300% returns on cryptocurrency mining is either naive or outright scam-like behavior. And then they made these vague jazz hand promises about like, hey, there's gonna be some automated trading going on in the background and some high frequency stuff. And just, and it was all filled with these infographics that talked about transparency uh, while all the whole while being opaque and locking up your money. They took custody of people's uh, cryptocurrency, which was an interesting uh, move, I thought, because the whole, as we talked about in the first episode of Ask Dr. Bitcoin, what is the value proposition of blockchain itself? It's to disintermediate the requirement for trust between counterparties. And what did BitConnect and USI do immediately afterward? They reintroduced trust. They said, give me your money. We'll hold on to it and make more money out of it and then give it back to you a little bit at a time. 
obviously uh, they were doing something behind the scenes that they didn't want you to know about and they called it their secret sauce intellectual property. Uh, that's kind of an over broad overview of what they did. Now, if you look uh, around in kind of the aftermath, uh, they have tried to make some uh, plausible sounding explanations as to why they're, they're collapsing. BitConnect and USI Tech did differ in one key aspect. Uh, BitConnect used a token, kind of an ICO model, to fundraise and distribute, whereas USI Tech dealt with Bitcoin natively. But then both of them are following the same pattern where they first locked up funds that they were even paying the commissions on from uh, to disallow withdrawals and then they uh the the price and the the uh the, uh, the structure around the fundraising and the affiliate marketing started to collapse entirely and then they then come the excuses and then come you know the the the, the prosecution and the regulation so again, like as I said at the top of the program, this is, a, this is a frustrating thing because what it means for us people that are honestly working in blockchain, this is what usually precedes uh, severe government regulation. And there's a, a whole, well, the vast majority of the cryptocurrency community is in it to change the world with this brand new disruptive and transformative technology. And unfortunately, uh, a large number of people's first introduction to cryptocurrency is through USI Tech and through BitConnect, and they're left with a sad, ta a bad taste in their mouth, and they're going to complain, and that will bring on the new regulation. It's an unfortunate situation. We're going to teach you in this next segment how to kind of spot this stuff on your own and perhaps uh, avoid these types of problems in the future. So stay tuned for that. So now we're going to help you try to avoid the pitfalls of falling into a scam coin situation. Uh, this is uh, not specific to Ponzi schemes, but of course the ones we're talking about this week were in fact Ponzi schemes. There's other types of scams out there where people are raising ICOs strictly for fundraising purposes and bolting with the money or just not doing anything with the, the cash they've raised. This will kind of help you avoid all those types of scams. The first thing I always look for when I'm researching something is what do the influencers say? There's a reason why the neck bearded forum dwellers are a requirement to get your project out. And they're kind of a gauntlet that everyone has to run is because they're really good at picking out a scam. Red flags pop up immediately. Vitalik Buterin, the creator of Ethereum is often cited as an advisor for ICOs and new coin projects. And that's your first red flag. That's a, that's a particular red flag you can easy to spot because Vitalik has said, I I don't work on anything but Ethereum. Beyond that, you can say, what are they trying to do, right? Uh, with BitConnect and uh, USI Tech, they were holding assets hostage. That's not an aspect of a really positive, uh, positive cryptocurrency scheme. Liquidity is generally the point of having a token. And if you're giving them your money and they say, okay, we're going to sit on it for six months or a year, or whatever term, uh, that's that's a pretty big red flag. As we talked about, the whole point of blockchain is to disintermediate trust. You shouldn't have to trust somebody with your money when it comes to blockchain. So here's another really kind of a, a it's a Google trick, Google foo. If you Google search the name of the project and then autocomplete comes up and puts scam at the end, that's an indication that it might be a scam or that they're worried they're going to be accused of being a scam. It's a, it's a common uh, network marketer trick uh, for folks that have had a history with uh, being accused of doing scams, that they will just create these fake review websites uh, so that when people search for, is this thing a scam, they'll come up with a friendly website, something that's friendly to the project, as opposed to some blogger out there, an independent journalist that said, oh yeah, I reviewed this thing and it truly is a scam. And then they'll put affiliate links at the bottom and draw you back into the project and say, oh no, it's, it's totally safe. Red flag, don't fall for it. Uh, here's a little bit more of a technical tip. Uh, GitHub, it's a great repository for open source projects that is used inside and outside of the cryptocurrency community. Um, this one takes a little bit of practice to understand how to do, but if you're technically savvy, you'll pick it up. Every cryptocurrency project will put, or especially if they're launching their own coin, will put their code up on GitHub or something like GitHub. Now within GitHub, you can see the amount of lines and source code that's been written. You see what the, the frequency of what the publishing was, how much each individual contributor did, how many contributors there were, and see how what type of activity there was in that project. And when did it take place? Did it take place before, during, or after their liquidity event? Is it during their ICO or during their sales process? Or did it have a, a nice run-up period before that? Passionate projects, projects with passionate contributors 
do have contributions that take place long before the liquidity event. That's a good sign. Uh, and then if you're investing in something that's already launched, it's past the ICO phase, is there continuing uh, updates to their, their code and to their GitHub repository? That means they didn't just take the money and run or they didn't take the money and sat on their laurels. They're continuing to work on the technology they say they're working on. Uh, and finally, who do they list as their advisors and their boosters? We, we talked about this at the top, like Vitalik is a red sign, but what if they are, or don't have a lot of well-known uh names up there. They'll have no names that show up in LinkedIn or they don't show up uh, in searches of, uh, of uh, editorialists around the, the cryptocurrency community. What are those influencers out there on Twitter and elsewhere saying about the project? Go check what Andreas Antonopoulos is having to say about it or Eric Voorhees or Vitalik Buterin. Chances are, if it's a well-known scam, all of these influences I just mentioned were out there on Twitter saying, don't do it, it's a bad idea. That will largely steer you away from the big ones and you can use your best judgment on the small scams. So if you're looking for more sources of information uh, to research on specifically BitConnect and USI Tech, I would strongly encourage you to go to the subreddits for both of those projects. They are full of sob stories right now. And if you were hit by one of these scams, Suicide Prevention Hotline, check it out. Honestly, your life is worth more than your money and hopefully you'll use this as a learning experience. There are many investors stumble and fall and then get back up and continue to do successful things. So. Keep that in mind as you move forward. Well, there you have it, your blockchain and cryptocurrency prescription. As always, these are just my thoughts and I encourage you to seek out a second opinion, although maybe not on BitConnect or USI Tech. Subscribe for more videos in blockchain and cryptocurrency and if you enjoyed today's video, share it with a friend so they can see. Thanks for watching and don't forget to see the receptionist on your way out. Don't do illegal shit.